Yo guys, welcome to the Zelda Fiction. Today we are gonna see, what if Naruto was the emperor of Jing and takes revenge on Konoha. Part 1. Huge shout out to EQUINOX13 for this story. If you end up liking this video, please consider subscribe, so without further ado, let's get into the video. Hold it's still freaking cold even with the pyre burning. Thought the Yuzumaki to himself his men standing around the area dressed like he was in the ragtag clothes the various outfits of each before they were captured worn and torn. Naruto what's your plan in regards to this? I mean we weren't supposed to get killed back there I mean everything with Muku and Mui, and on top of it everything else I mean he had a clansman of his come in to try and take control, and your village has been looking for you. Said Raizetsu the girl blushing as the blonde turned to stare at her with the fierce eyes he now bore from his near-death experience, which turned back into the cerulean orb she was more used to. What we do is we make a way out of this mess this cave won't be safe for long after that we need to form the backbone of our efforts into a combined form. In other words we all need to put aside any differences of our home villages, grudges and old hatreds, and move forward together. Because we're all equally hunted by our villages after that little stunt of Mui's. Said the blonde with many ninja nodding the blonde side as he flashed back very briefly before shaking it off to the final battle what had all seemed so fast, but somehow someway he had known Yuku would not be happy to have his friend back after being released from the box and made a shadow clone who tried to substitute with Raizetsu. It had worked well for the blonde as he managed to save his friend's life from her former best friend and crush, albeit she was slashed heavily on her right side from a puncture wound. Needless to say after he beat Nyuku Raizetsu was grateful and tried to heal the blonde of his seemingly fatal wound at the cost of her life, only to prove that he was fine by the blonde, proving to be a shadow clone. Using her skills, Raizetsu managed to get him out of the area in a body flicker, and the blonde convinced her to help him gather the other prisoners as many as they could together. Then without warning the blonde paused then cursed yelling. Damn you. Naruto what's wrong? Asked his friend and the blonde realizing his outburst sighed and said. I just had a shadow clone disperse turns out my old village tried to laugh off me being imprisoned and called it a mission of all things and on top of that they tried to say that it was training for me to be a better ninja. Hearing this the other prisoners were shocked and one of them a man Naruto knew was Kento Numashiro said, adjusting his former mist armband. Damn that is messed up so where to now boss? Smirking the young man said to him. Egrashi port I have an idea no. Dot not an idea, but a plan to ensure our independence if there are any of you with families who can be trusted and can make it with my shadow clone sealing them and bringing them there within a period of four days. We will gather everyone loyal to us and then begin my new plan a plan to make a place where we can be safe from the predations of the eastern lands. Hearing this Raizetsu's eyes widened. You mean there are lands beyond the elemental lands those lands not mentioned since the Sage of the Six Path forbade us all people of the east to head there. Nodding the blonde said to her. True ordinarily that's what it is however he also said, and I quote from this his own personal journal, which I've retrieved from my mother's homeland whirlpool I say to all people of the west, do not head east for any reason other than to escape assured destruction for, the powers of there are formidable, and more than the united east can handle with their frail patent, should one of my descendants. Lead you were one of our distant kin then I say it is viable, and I wish you luck on your journey. I'm a descendant of the Senju clan through the Uzumaki clan Raizetsu, meaning I am one of the few here recommends to go south in a situation like this, we should I mean can you and the other grass ninja prisoners honestly head back to Kusagakur after the mess with the fruit and flower groups in power. There? Hearing that made the girl and the other native grass ninja shiver as they thought about just what might happen to them, should they do so with Raizetsu speaking their thoughts quite well. No if anything we may be considered traitors for how things went with the opening of the box, given the intricacy of the opening process of the box, as well as the fact that it's no doubt known I let it happen, because you weren't the only one there when I was reunited with my friend, and because I wanted the box to open, so I can try to save Muku. Nodding Naruto said smiling as he put his hand on her shoulder. I'm sorry I couldn't save him, but for what it's worth dot dot, I'd like to offer you a place you can be where all of you can be, and not worry about being hunted by your old village. Stepping forward a man with a hard nose and a very plain face, but build of a ninja said with a business tone. We will follow your eyes etsu you're not only one of the most powerful ninja among use, but the most well versed in all areas especially diplomacy. Said the man and with her nod she said in a similar tone to her blonde friend, her anbu mincet kicking in. We will your offer is good, but should you form a nation we also wish for citizenship, as well as the benefits any natural citizens will have within said nation or place. Smiling the blonde extended his hand and said. The live got my savings I managed to get another shadow clone to bring them to me with the savings from my books, we should be able to make our ideals come true. Antonu Mishiro sighed in irritation as he turned to the blonde next to him and said. Hind you were right happy boss I've already got to hear about this from my fellow ex-mist associates isn't that enough. 
Smirking as he pocketed the wad of rye on Naruto said. Sure sure thank you for your contribution to our fleet fund Numashiro if anyone else wishes to bet against me please do so now. Many of the people looked away and Ryazetsu sighed in slight irritation. This is serious Naruto just because you proved him wrong at us making it here in a day doesn't mean you should rub his face in it. As for you Numashiro you should know better than to bet against someone who fraud against the guardian of the box of pleasure and survived. A sheepish look was the response as he said. But I thought I could win. Sighing the blonde shook his head as they entered the main room, just the three of them where an older man with grey hair waited with a simple regal robe, the man smiled his kind face showing slow aging, as he spoke with a boisterous tone. Naruto good to see you. Look at you so tall. Smiling he bowed to the man his fellow ninja following suit. You honor me with this audience with you now being in ever greater duty with the dishonoring of the Watarashi clan, I know you are quite busy. Smiling the man waved off the thanks. True I am busier, but thanks to Idate who helps to run said duties I am able to manage in my usual position, the port I see you have brought some friends with you. Grinning the blonde said. Yes I have this is Raizetsu she's a very powerful ninja all on her own, and here is my friend Numashiro he's pretty good as well. Nodding the man said letting out a sigh. But now what can I do to repay the favor of preserving and encouraging Idate all those years ago dot, you know he still talks about you, he wishes to test his natural speed against your ninja speed sometime. Smirking at the guy who could get under his skin like few others he said. He'll have his race in good time, but I have to ask frankly Jirachu-sama, would it be possible for you to make us a series of ships, some of which would be like homes and others fortified for transport? Hearing this the man smiled. Of course I would be willing to give you 10 ships for free if you'd like, but after that I'm afraid you would need to start paying, as we already have trade orders with several other nations, and the loss of our already built ships would be too much. Of course I'm willing to pay I've got up to 897,000 Ryo for this project. Said the blonde unsealing a ceiling scroll and much to Jirachu's shock, a massive large block of cash hit the floor of the room. The other ninja were shocked too, however Jirachu clapped his hand together and laughed saying. You certainly are a young man full of surprises very well this fleet will be one of the finest we've made for you are there any specifications. Just some I wish for this style the style of some fortifications and a few towns I've seen be a part of your designs. Ah Tanzaku quarters, Takumi village hum and the land of waves with Hmkikum castle, interesting we can do these designs Naruto-san. However is there a specific time you would want them done by? Sighing the blonde only said to the man. As soon as possible dot. Nodding he said. It would take at least three weeks to get them completed in the initial numbers you've asked for. Nodding the blonde said. Excellent we will stay in touch. Said the blonde as him and his companions disappeared in three puffs of smoke, leading the man to sigh as his guard's tense body language dropped, and he got up went to his table, and began to write on a fresh scroll, a new list of orders for the port ship rights. Two weeks later Yuzuhi Agakur. For once in a very long time the ruins and skyscrapes of the infamous Whirling Tide village were filled with life however to the spy within said ruins running it was a death trap. I've got to get out of here Tsuchika Gay-sama will want to know about this. Thought the man before a cry of dot. Fire style. Was all he heard he tuned out the rest of the jutsu, as he dodged several flying fiery heads and gasped as he was hit with a wall of water before turning to mud. Rasengan. GHK. Instantly the three ninja as well as several others in large group watched as the spy fell in front of him coughing up a storm, a cry of dot. Wine style great downcast. Being heard as a wave of wind came from 20 feet in the air and crashed down into the man hurting him badly, as the tornado drill of hardened wind hit him in the already injured chest, making him cough and groan within the earth. Dot. Well isn't this interesting a stone ninja now what is it you have to tell us Ryazetsu you know some techniques being an anbu to get information right. Nodding once the indigo eyes woman looked at the man who clearly was not a hardened ninja who winced and said. All right I spy for stone on a long term watch for Thitsuchika Gay it's graveyard shift no one subso to be here please don't hurt me. Scoffing Rushio Numuido said. Um so a green spy of no value forgive us if we want to interrogate you to make sure. Um sitting ninja said with Naruto glaring at him and directing killing intent at the man who tried to reach for something behind him, much to the increased tensing of the ninja around him, the frail stone ninja heaved to the side then passed out. I want him interrogated and the rest of the eastern block of intact buildings sealed as well as anything found of my clan's culture given to me, we've only got a week left people, then we head out to the south seas. Hi Naruto-sama. Said the man while Naruto sighed as Raizetsu patted him on the back comforting him as she said. It'll get easier when we're away Naruto. Dot. I know Raizetsu, but it doesn't make it easy when these ninja the elemental seems to be trying to nip at us. Hearing this she sighed then smiled and said. Through with Idate saying he's faster than you in his letter I can imagine why you'd be scared. I am not. 
Raizetsu he's full of hot air he's fast I'll give him that, but he's got a long way to go before he can beat me. Smirking the conversation went on as the two friends got to know each other more Rumio saying as the two talk, pocketing some quiet thoughts to himself, as he drunk some sake with some of the men, and began playing some card games. Land of Fire one week LATR Kanahagakur. Tsunade knew just knew that someone somewhere in heaven had to be hating her, as the vast amount of paperwork and council members in her office asking for a leaf leadership meeting was now the proverbial high point to the day. Fine main council room 30 minutes. Nodding both ninja elder councillors left leaving the Hokage with a massive headache. Bakashi get your ass in here now and tell me you've got something, or I will tell them to come back and say you're finally ready to be Hokage. No need for that Hokage-sama. Said the Cyclops ninja as he quickly came in through the window laughing up a storm before sighing as Tsunade said to him. Have you gotten anything on Naruto? At this the silver-haired ninja sighed having to give an answer. No Hokage-sama I'm sorry to say we haven't located him or any signs of where he's gone. Bounding her fist once on the table the desk cracked slightly, and the Hokage said. Damn it thank you Kakashi for doing your best tell your teammates to get some rest and be on alert for shift rotation of search tomorrow, but for now to get some rest. I know they want to keep looking, but they need to sleep. Tuckling Kakashi nodded the Hokage's words were very true. Hi Hokage-sama they definitely wish to get their friend back Naruto is quite the ninja, and with Akatsuki out there he will need the village to help him survive. Tsunade sighed hearing this and added dot. Definitely Jiraiya and I would be hard pressed to fight off two of their members much less all nine, and the fact that they only send two each group for the lesser beasts makes me worried they may send up to four after S rank ninjas, not even the previous Hokage S, have had to face such odds. Said the Senju for a Hokage, frankly making Kakashi wince as he tried to keep such scenarios out of his head, his worry caused him to curse himself for putting off training Naruto seriously, in exchange for Sasuke over the blonde, out of fear he'd end up dead like a beetle. Yes it would be something, but have faith Hokage-sama Naruto is creative and form his experience with Yurei-sama, he definitely knows better than to try and take the Akatsuki head on by himself. Sighing the Hokage said to her ninja. I hope so still I really wish I had a clue where he was and whoa he was doing it isn't safe out there. Yurei I really wish you were here, you would definitely be able to cheer me up. The Kage said to herself as she tried to get her mind off of her ex-teammate who and focused on the future of her home village. Time skip one week with Naruto. Looking into the cell Naruto sighed at the figure which lay unmoving in the cell and shook his head at it, then sighed as he sensed Numashiro and said. Numashiro play several exploding tags in here I want them to detonate after a minute let them know their spy is dead. Nodding the former Miss Ninja said. It's done my lord I will meet you within the next 20 minutes for the departure. Nodding the Yuzumaki said. Good use the tags I gave you I made them especially myself from a formula of my old masters I modified they should work very well for us. Nodding the Miss Ninja watched as his master left a room and set about dooming the unconscious stone spy of a prisoner within said room. At the shores of Yuzuhiagakur's largest city. Sir I found these scrolls in one of the ruins I hope they will help. Hearing this form one of the ninja he took the scroll and said. Thank you Kansas Jin it was right. Hmm they have a seal on them hmm if my memory serves it's a blood seal here let me just, takes out kunai and cuts palm, alright now to read the con Kansas Jin this scroll. Damn I wish we had a system in place I'd promote you for this it's it's just. Pairing up the blonde was looked at strangely by the other ninjas however Raizetsu said. It holds significant meaning to you it must be clan relic or something of equal importance. It's the scroll of seals for you Z U H I O G A K U R E whirling tides, essential it holds every bit of knowledge for Yuzuhiagakur, whirling tides, and it's bound to the one who opens the blood seal, making it indestructible and impossible to steal from the one who holds it, as it is linked to me through a seal now on my body. Damn no wonder the third Mizukagi obsessed over getting your clan with something like that, as well as their skills in sealing jutsu, they would have greatly strengthened the village. Oh well at least you're our leader so where to admiral. Asked the man and the blonde raised an eyebrow making Raizetsu sigh as the blonde grinned and said. To the unknown. Where few ships have ever gone we're heading on the Jodan Sea and making our way through Kaisen Pass. Hearing this all the older ninja stiffened with the young seeming confused, Numashira went a bit pale and Raizetsu said. Naruto. Are you feeling alright because I don't think going to a place where chakra goes haywire and jutsu doesn't work does not sound like a good idea. Sighing the blonde said. I know but in all honesty where can we go? We would be fugitives anywhere I could get us a home in the elementals. All it would take is one ninja from one of the ninja villages one of us's form, and we would be hunted down for the rest of our lives. However word that I've gotten from some of the belongings of my master is there are rumors of a land to the south, there's a path that if followed will take us northeast towards new lands. Sang Raizetsu said to him. 
Yes if it's true, but how would we know that right off the bat it's not like you've went there and know for sure. Smirking the blonde made a cross hand seal, then put one hand on the boat they had come in, and showed that it made a perfect copy of himself and the ship on the side of it. You were saying. And Tony Mashiro whistled then said. Am and he scouted it out too so what's on the other side admiral. Smirking the blonde said. Chief will do and you won't believe what I've found I mean my guy managed to find a town and get a map, but still it's something else you've gotta see it to believe it. He said and the people nodding accepted his word just then a voice said. Naruto. And all the ninjas were on guard when the newcomers appeared, but now they were shocked especially Rai Zetsu as an orange-haired Kinoichi hugged him, and several other ninja appeared the leader of which was very amused. Sasam chan it's good to see you again I'm glad you guys accepted my invitation. It was our pleasure to Naruto we really need a new home now that the daimyo of the land of rice is in charge again with Orochimaru seemingly gone, he has begun making plans to assert his dominance and his neighbors of similar size. The Kanoichi said with her enthusiasm showing well with some annoyance on the end dot. Hearing her reminded Naruto of the mission to rice country a rather Togaker, and made him wince as he thought about the Fuma situation back then, and thinking of this he said. Which means he wants to use your clan to fight senseless wars of expansion. At this Hanzaki chimed in the large leader of the Fuma clan adding. Yes and it makes little sense for us to stay with Fuma Lane being embargoed thank you for sealing up our hometown by the way. Naruto waved the man off. It's no problem him my other seal markings are activated him, so we have two more clans coming with us and some citizens from Wave My Shadow clones have reverse summon type, sealed them into copies of the scrolls I have then dispersed, meaning I now have the other citizens to fill the ships, I think it's time we departed now everyone to the ships. I'll unseal our friends and then we can get going. Agreeing the ninjas having followed Naruto Rai Zetsu and Kento Numashiro, the man who beat Myuku and Anbu and Jonin, saw little point in arguing the plan, and the work was quickly done with the various people soon departing from Whirlpool, the island's trademark whirlpools dying out as they passed then reappearing with a stronger ferocity afterwards, as they passed by heading out into the other first. Southeast for several dozen miles. Then catching a seemingly hidden passage in a natural fog bank headed northeast to their destiny several long leagues away. You do know that as a native of mist I'm used to cold harsh weather, but even for me a tsunade is a bit much. Numashiro said and Naruto glared at the man as their ship exited the violent series of storms behind them, his many shadow clones, letting out sighs of relief as all across the fleet they dispersed. Well I didn't expect it either Numashiro. He said a bit annoyed and seeing this Raizetsu disarmed both men saying. True which is why as ninja we must expect these things and move on when we pass through them still very good thinking making those shadow clones to steady the ship's rope's masts and to help row through the storm. Sighing both men nodded once and Naruto didn't comment on the compliment, instead looking ahead as he took a map out of his back pocket and then handed it to Raizetsu. She sighed as she observed it and the notations then spoke up again. Naruto I think it would be best if we head here this town doesn't seem like it has the most protection, but it has natural fields, but more importantly some iron mines by it, we may be able to trade protection for mineral resources and some of their excess food. Smiling wide Naruto clapped Raizetsu on the back and said. But then let's make our way there full speed. Nodding the people moved and made their way to their stations, the clusters of ships moving in spaced groups, the ships were armed with wooden bodies, laden with light straits of iron, protecting the outer parts from harm. The head of many were hard triangular beaks per Naruto's request, and though many wondered at the design none had complained and sailing towards their new home in the north, few cared for the details. Coastline. The coastline was similar to many in the elementals, and idly looked very identical to the lands a young genin once went to on his first mission. With even a boy of similar age by the shorelines gazing with shocked awe at the sign of the ships however a loud voice broke the boy out of his reverie. Isuke what are you doing? Turning to face the older woman the boy smiled widely while pointing out at the ships, which made the older woman pause with shock as the boy grinned saying. Look ships real ships auntie Masa. Sighing the older woman with garb similar to Chio of sand, but for clearly a civilian said. Isu please don't scare me like that come go back to the village now. Hearing this the boy's face was one of shock and he opened his mouth to argue, but looking at his aunt, relented at the look on her face. Okay auntie Masa. The boy said leaving the are making the woman sigh as she looked at the ship approaching and reached into her cloak, unsheathing a large tanning knife the size and look of a small jagged saber she looked out at the ships, which had some small vessels heading out to land, and waited preparing herself mentally. Dot. They definitely are militant, but what do they want? Are they coastal raiders? Mercenaries or something else? She wondered inwardly as the first of the small craft hit the shore, and the subjects of all got out two of the people one man and one woman with unusual startling eyes, came up to her the blonde of the two smiled and bowed politely, much to her shock. The older woman did the same, and the woman bowed too as the blonde spoke. 
Hello we are travelers from the west we have just come to these lands and gotten word of some villages this way. We would like to offer trade and possible inquire about possibly making a trade agreement between us. Hearing this the lady sighed and said to the group. Very well follow me I will take you to the village, but be warned we have strong guards protecting the village. But that she moved forward the ninjas seemed unfazed by the blatant mistrust, though Naruto had to admit he felt both amused and shocked the old lady distrusted them so. Still making their way forward from the coast onto a paved pass, they followed the old woman without complaint, though the small group of twelve kept their guards up the other ninja following Raizetsu and Naruto without complaint, while the rest stayed behind to guard the transport. Without much more delay they ended up passing by six fields two large ones and the rest of smaller sizes, as they came up to the large wooden gate it built into two large iron beams. The guards were dressed in armor that covered their biceps, shoulders, stomach, and knees in buckler-based armor, the tiny circular shield serving to protect, said points, while they wore helmets with horsetail-like brown tassels hanging like ponytails from the top of said helmets. The guards looked at the foreigners with suspicion and turned their heads to Masa who merely said. The east wind breezes well on the light day. Nodding the men opened the gate without a problem the ninjas passed through the town, which seems to have been in full production. So it is a farming village through and through huh? Asked Raizetsu when Naruto said to her question. Yes but I can smell a smelter several of them not far from here, probably away from where she's taking us. He said in an equally low tone and if the woman heard them she did not respond as she lead them to a medium two-story building and without knocking went straight inside leading them from the foyer inside. Then with expert ease the woman threw open the door and revealed an older man looking out of his window with a spigless giggling as he did which clearly irked the woman and caused Raizetsu to scowl as he muttered. Yes definitely oh big breasts are the best tiny can't compete. The ridiculous old horndog stop daydreaming wake up. We've got visitors traders from the west and not the regular kind we're used to in the northeast. Hearing this the man had jumped up in shock turning to meet the group his disinterest quickly passed to embarrassment, but the man had the strength not to blush as he coughed not his closed fist, then made his way over to a die with a simple wooden desk on it sitting at it he said. Very well my name is Jan K Town Leader in other words, I am the Lingdao otherwise known as leader of this village. My name is Naruto Uzumaki I am the leader of the fleet which has come to the shores of the land's coast and both I and my people would be honored if you would allow us to interact and trade with you, perhaps we could discuss trading as well. Seeing this the man looked at the group with critical eyes and Naruto couldn't help but flash back to the leaf when he was a boy and he got to see the leaders of a nearby town talk to the Hokage. The Hokage had looked over the man with keen eyes and had near instantly frowned and declined the mission the man requested, citing his nervousness, telltale signs of lying and sweating, as signs he was being dishonest and setting them up. He's sizing us up and determining our integrity as well as truthful nature this guy might leer like Jiraiya, but he's sharp like here is in no doubt. The older man nodded one stopping his beepasis and narrowing of his eyes and sighed as he clapped his hands. Very well what is it your people wish to offer us? Seeing he had the floor Naruto said to the man as Raizetsu gave him a look of reassurance as he felt her gaze, then looked back at the man and said. We can offer you further protection from as well as the extermination of the bandits currently plaguing you. Hearing this the man leaned forward slightly and said. What makes you think we have such a problem there is no damage to the village. Hearing this the ninjas behind them seemed nervous, though Raizetsu kept her cool like Naruto she thought. True I didn't notice any damage to any of the structures and the guard seemed fairly well trained and should be able to handle regular bandits. She thought but was a bit shocked as she saw Naruto grin like the cat that got a canary and simply said to the man. Because you rotated one of your farther crop stock to the destroyed field to the western side of the village by the bare minimal forest growth by the tree lines. You wish to make it appear as if you haven't been attacked, probably got your best to try and make it seem like you hadn't been, but the fact is I saw the crop nearly around the backside of the village from the gate and it was missing a large chunk of the supplies currently by the tree line. Also last time I checked potatoes are connected to the roots and clusters of them not growing separate off the roots and stems alone, like some of the haphazard ones are lying in the dirt without any roots or stems that look like they were dropped in a hurry. Hearing this shock the ninjas beside and behind him the older woman seemed shocked, while the older man had a look of concentration on his face for a bit before sighing and chuckling before saying dot. You are surprisingly astute for someone so energetic good very good it will serve you well, and you are right we did cover up the damage to our village's field. Dot. Hearing this Raizetsu asked. Then why hide the fact that it did to maintain an image of strength when dealing with us? She asked and the man nodded. Yes the villages around these lands have purchased the services of mercenaries before, and a large number of them are wild cards. Some being satisfied with their payments others seeing weakness and being unsatisfied with what they get take it out on their village, I had planned to see what you have to offer form a position of strength, as my village can hardly stand a vicious blow right now. 
At this the old woman said. I wonder why Tanzo really fucked us over calling in men to help him deal with another ass move of a conflict, one he no doubt started. Sighing the other man said. We agreed to send mutual aid when one of us is embroiled in someone else's war masa I am a man of my word and I had to honor it, I stamped it with my personal seal. Said the man in a strong tone and Masa sighed the woman clearly having expected this and said. I know that it's just that I don't want him taking advantage of you and dragging you into this you're like a brother to me and every time the two of you talk it wears you down. She said simply and the old man sighed smiling at her as he said. You aren't exactly an easy person to talk with either. Huffing the woman said. At least I dot give you gray hairs. Laughing the man shook his head then turned back to his guests and said. I accept whatever help you can offer my village in exchange we can discuss what we can do for you about those mining rights fair enough. Nodding the blonde said. It will serve us well thank you so who are these bandits and which direction are they coming from? Sighing the older man took a deep breath and began to tell them of the June bandits and where they came from as he finished telling what he knew the man thought as the ninjas agreed. I don't know why, but I know June is dead and some part of my soul feels pity for him what are these people going to do to him? He wondered as the party left the building and were led to the gate where Masa pointed to them the direction of their targets. With Naruto and friends 20 minutes later. Now that we're on the right path and found one of their bloody broken swords I saw we break here for now. Dot. Said the blonde and the ninjas nodded and took various seats on the ground, taking out their rations, as they did rise at Su's side and did the same breaking her bread in half and offering Naruto a piece. Here I noticed you didn't bring any from the ship so you can have some of mine. Tuckling as he rubbed the back of his head Naruto said. Thanks. I forgot to bring any I had expected simple negotiations, but this is what we've got instead hunting bandits, a C-rank mission oh well at least it can get us what we need our foot in the door. Raising an eyebrow she said. But what if they slam the door on it after we take out the bandits? Seeing the former Anbu smirk Naruto gave her one of his own and said. Easy the fact that we took out the bandits means we're an even worse problem in our minds if we succeed to them. Dot, though I have no intention of making them pay me this mission with or without pay, will give us a good idea of what we face out here just after landing, much less the larger threats on this continent. Nodding at his word she still couldn't believe this continent was slightly larger than her old home continent, and she just imagined what it would have been like to see it all, not just the limited areas on the town map noted and illustrated it was just the training she had from the grass and boot department and her own curiosity that got her. So everyone I think it is time I tell you all something important, something that now I can tell you without fear of the hidden villages getting word would anyone like to listen the choice to stay with us can be made and a boat given to you to head back west if you wish however. I wish to tell you now of all my heritage before we move on as this group has a majority of stone ninja to the mist and thus I wish for you to hear me now as honestly as possible without tensions flaring and mass fights breaking out on the ship. Hearing this one of the men a tanned man with a bear and a medium frame asked him. Oh yeah Yuzumaki and what's that? Most of us don't give a damn we just want to live so if you're related to the Yuzumaki clan head we don't give a damn we just want to live. Hearing this Naruto sighed and said. It's a lot more complicated than that and if you wish to fight me afterwards I will fight you fairly all of you at once if you want, but I cannot go without telling you all of this it would be deceptive the same to you miss ninjas, however Raizetsu I wish to tell you now so you know the full truth you're my friend and I wish to not keep such secrets from you, if I can help it all it does is bite. People in the ass in the end. I understand Naruto, but what possible secret could be this bad for all of us to be nervous or worried about? She asked and Naruto sighed as he began his tale and giving his answer. I was a student of Jureya for a time before I winded P at the blood prison, and it was terrible the man was a deadbeat lech who would always borrow my money and leave me for hours sometimes days alone, but what happened one thundering dark cloudy night made me almost hate the man for quite some time when I learned it before deciding on a better means of revenge. The blonde said simply as he unraveled his secret to the ninjas before him of what happened then on that day. The he he that's right ladies it is I the famed author of Itcha Itcha and Sanin of the Leaf, the gallant Jureya. And I'm here to play. Yelled the man as he opened his wallet revealing a large stack of Raya within instantly, three women latched themselves to him giggling and laughing within the bar, as a blonde outside of a nearby window that was open shook his head, then dispersed into a puff of smoke. Dark room. That lying sack of shit. Said the blonde out loud to no one in particular thunder rang out distantly, but there was no rain, and it seemed as if it had responded to the blonde Uzumaki's outrage. I need to go meet with one of my contacts Naruto an agent who it is critical for me to meet with Naruto it's important business and I'll be meeting him in a graveyard. Bah. He knows I hate creepy G ghost related things damn it, I still need to practice those exercises to get rid of that fear just three more steps and I'm done with that still that bastard left me hanging, I wonder how he'd feel if I went through his stuff the way he does mine. 
said the blonde angrily as he had definitely been hungry, and his wallet was now definitely empty when he filled it at the bank in the last city they had been to in fire country. And granted they were still near the country and a safe house Jurea had on a return trip back before heading further south, the blonde knew the nearest bank was closed as it was sundown, and was less than pleased that he was broke. So with that in mind the blonde did some hand seals for one of the few jutsu he knew and clapped them together. Ninja art search pulse. It was jutsu apparently made by the third Hokage that the old man taught him and made him promise to use to only search for things that were important because he kept losing his important school documents. And while Saratobi was suspicious on how suspecting outside influences, he had taught the Yuzumaki so that he could always find them when he needed to reapply for the academy every year. So with that in mind he was shocked when the pulse went out and touched the walls pulsing like blue rings from the four points, the walls floor and ceiling, and each moving towards a spot on the far right wall, where a gaudy looking toad emblem with a face similar and boisterous acting to Jiraiya, glowed before falling off the little bronze toad, hitting the floor with a dull clang as several seals on. It sizzled out. Shrugging the blonde went up to the safe and was shocked to find some scrolls with some complicating few injutsu in them he pocketed them, but was even more shocked to find a book that says journal copy IV the gallant Jiraiya. Snorting the blonde open tea up glancing for sections that were important however, he noticed a section of it glowing with the same color as the third Hokage's jutsu blue, and seeing the side dot. Maybe it's a jutsu or something, but finally something good out of this mess I mean damn how long can this guy go on listing women's measurements and talking about himself like a god or something. Wondered the blonde and read the small passage unprepared for what awaited him as he read it. The day I was named godfather of Naruto by Minato Namazik my student and Kishina Yuzumaki his fiancé. With both of them excited and deciding to name him after the character in my first book the only one I did not write about porn, but about a ninja named Naruto, who would go on to do great things while protecting his precious ones and becoming a strong well-respected ninja. I could hardly predict this coming heck I couldn't, but I am deeply honored and swear I'll do my best Minato such a stickler for details, wanting to make it official by having the fire daimyo recognize it of all things. Oh boy, the less I am around the man the better as I wish his younger brother had gotten the throne eldest or not, the man definitely has some screws loose. But Kishina's reaction was the funniest she kept going on and on about how manly her son would be, and how she hoped he got a nice girlfriend who loved him and made him a better man for himself. Of that last part I can agree with her on he 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 well it's time for me to go see sensei man this book is filled up, I really need to get a new one by until the next volume my pretty book. Calm dead silence reigned both outside and around the small shack hidden by shrubbery, before a burst of killing intent flooded the small clearing, making the animals by a nearby brook scatter. Furiaya. The screech of anger rang out as a brief flash of red covered the blonde, and his eyes flickered red before he took several deep breaths and counted down, he could hear the growls of anger of his tenant, but said nothing as he calmed down his ferocious rage, knowing that his beast chakra would get the man running, and he definitely did not want to be caught with the man's safe open, oh no that would simply not do any good things for him. I need to be smart I might not be like Shikamaru, but I'm no dumbass when it comes to revenge and planning. He thought as he made several shadow clones then motioned his arm saying. Head back to the leaf village and use your copy of the stealth seal form Jurea's vault to get an undetected afterwards break into the library, search everything you can copy what's valuable, then head somewhere private and disperse after sealing the contents of the scrolls into the two-way storage scroll, then disperse. Nodding his clones disappeared into several puffs of smoke changing into birds before flying out the window the original Naruto had now opened. Three Horus later. Naruto stopped his training both his practice of Tijutsu and what his shadow clone self was doing, trying hard to duplicate Jiraiya's seals, and while not up to the level of detail as the man's the blonde work was coming surprisingly easy to him in the retracing and channeling F chakra, as well as writing of the numbers and drawing of the arrow patterns well. Ironically the blonde found out why it came easy, as Jiraiya added on his early seal notes to ask Uzumaki seal masters or a master Jinjuro for help, and he realized his family was probably skilled in it. However it also helped that he got a good idea from the opening statement to Jiraiya's first attempt. Alright this is my first attempt at Fuinjutsu, and though it sucks I've learned a lot about the art. The first thing ironically is that despite Nto being used as often Fuinjutsu is a lot like ninjutsu, only you write down the combination of words in a patterns with lines with arrowheads, pointing to the next series in the chain, or tiny barely if not unrecognizable ones, guiding the seal's functions. And seal masters work. Things that don't look like commas on the words letters, but are those are the most powerful kind of Fuinjutsu, because they're so damn intricate usually using math, writing, and formulas of both to get the desired effect. 
Naruto had found the advice exceedingly helpful however his anger and scorn towards Jiraiya was something he suppressed, as well the man had not taught him about it, they had only spent about two years into their trip, and it was a possibility that he may have been saving that for the last year, to introduce him to her possibly at a later date. That was the kind of thoughts the blonde had when his shadow clones begun dispersing, and he got a good bit of knowledge that shocked him. There inside the library his clone had looked over and through several documents he remembered a few things from Aruka's class about the last war, the fourth Hokage fraud in, so he decided to look there he was astounded by all the confirmed kills he had, and also by the man's brilliance as several people including his sensei, Jiraiya. And others praised his skill however the thing that shook him up was when he found an old bingo book under the wartime section it was one belonging to stone, and it had a good number of ninjas from several nations however, halfway through the book on the 56 page he found what he was looking for his eyes widened at the face in the book, he dropped it in shock he he couldn't even finish speaking. But but in his mind he could he looks just like me. Thought the blonde is sure enough picking it up the entry read Minato Namazakon Kanahagakur, age 27, rank. S rank, designation flee on sight do not engage if you see target do not engage, try to sneak away if he spots you, you're doomed. Known for using an instantaneous teleporting jutsu to destroy his foes with his natural speed. As he went over the entry he saw that it was rumored he married an Yuzumaki, and then slowly but surely the pieces began to fit in place Naruto might not be the brightest one around, but seeing a Hokage, who looks like an older version of him in the stone bingo book. Then flashback. The ninjas around the blonde were shocked eyes widened for the mist ninjas and Raizetsu, while looks of realization and horror were plastered on those of the stone ninjas Naruto took out a kunai and looked resigned to a fight, but the stone ninja form before shook it off, then grunted a. Am so you're his son he killed my bastard of a cousin who was wrecking my family's home because my dad favored him and gave him our inheritance thanks. This shocked the blonde who awkwardly said. You're welcome what about the rest of you? Looking at his fellow stone ninjas the man grunted then said. Please you're embarrassing yourselves we may not be stone ninja, but damn get a grip. This kid ain't his father he's strong, but he's not him so if you want to treat him like he's him, I'll kick your fucking ass act like grown men, and for god's sake, if you've got a problem go don't make a fight in an unknown continent alright. The men nodded, but much to Naruto's shock, he found out none of the men had a grudge, as half the people Minato killed had been angry about the ceasefire plans that Tsuchikage had begun considering before Minato slaughtered them and said ninja had begun plotting an assault, while the other ninjas had been killed in the line of duty, but ironically had no relatives among the men or the fleet he led. Wait so that means the fourth died and you were left an orphan damn, I bet even them some of the hardcore haters back in the village would be happy to hear that. Yeah especially considering the fact that I am a Jinchiriki to boot said the blonde while thinking. Let's see what you think of that dot. Holy shit he could slaughter the bandits on his own. Damn he's got that kind of power. Fuck we definitely made the right choice. Well no challenging this guy fuck that I like my body the way it is. Similar statements went throughout the man, but he was surprised by their blowing off on it, to which the man explained. But Tsuchikage doesn't let hatred cloud his ninja's minds, he wants focus tempered rock hard ninja he only allows his ninja to loathe the governments of other villages they fight, not the ninja dot as the ninjas only follow the wills and plans of the kages, and the hokage set up his men not minato dot. It also helps the fourth hokage actually apologize for his actions in the war via transmitted speech from the hokage s tower when he was elected dot. Said the stone ninja much to the blonde's further shock, but also something which further enhanced his suspicion of his old home village, nodding he was surprised when his friend hugged him and gave him a kiss on the cheek saying. Baka if you told me I would have known to put more faith in you at the prison dam it made me so suspicious when you made the clones with the flame seal on you anyway. That's why I approached you and acted how I did while in the prison and trying to free Muku. Sighing the blonde said. No problem I miss ninjas you. We're fine it's just wow wait till Numashira senpai hears about this dot. Said the man as the ninja group was soon all ready to go, and the blonde directed his group forward to the bandits camp. Well this is most unexpected but nonetheless appreciated Ganju. Said the man in the closed darkened room with brown paneling and painted rice paper doors, the man in front of him had the dress and garb of a farmer, but nonetheless bore a distinct scar over his right eye like a crescent moon. I live to serve as best I can Tanzo Sama do you wish for me to take action against these foreigners? Asked a man and Tanzo put his hand to his short triangular beard pulling on it in short strokes before saying. No this is a boon if he can take care of the bandits I can keep Kashiro village's guards longer form why fight against Kashigi, the old stubborn man soldiers stand hard against the passes we need to claim to expand our villages, commerce he will be removed by other agents, while you continue your duties tell me of interest everything you can without involving yourself with the foreigners am I clear? Yes Tanzo-sama very and my brother's medicine. 
The man said nothing as he slowly reached not his row pockets and placed it on the desk with one singular slow movement. Every spoonful I promise now go. The farmer left the room and Tanzo sighed feeling an itch behind his eyes patch he scratched, but yet it remained with a frown he sat back and took a sip of tea from the small cup on his desk and narrowed his remaining living eyes as he thought. Something strong has changed the winds of conflict here I have not felt such an itch since the Lord Kento nearly united this side of the continent's eastern parts together what is going on here. He wondered to himself as his mind briefly wondered if it was the foreigners he scoffed before turning back to the report his spy had left him and began to go through it himself in the dim candle-lit room. The setting outside was fortified town with iron walls and guards posted everywhere several men and women being tended to or treating those hurt in the struggle in a military village away from Kashiro village. Kashiro village current time. Blinking dot only give him blinking Jan K don't show him how surprised you are thought the older man as he saw the head seven of them on the table and could barely believe it himself. Sorry about getting the extra ones if you don't have enough to offer, but they crossed our path by accident and when we saw the people they had in cages well, I just couldn't help but want to kick the crap out of them. Masa said hearing this. Really this is kicking the crap out of them damn where were you five months ago shit who cares well, Jan K I think we definitely should pay up now and get some long term agreements in place said the older woman looking at her friend while Naruto said as Raizetsu blushed. He said something I didn't like about my friend Raizetsu, so I tried to get him to change his opinions a nicer way, but when he laughed and called him me all sorts of things out of my name well that was the last straw. Suppressing the need to gulp nervously and showing his strength of will Jan Mei smiled calmly then said. Very good these men prowled more on our neighboring village to the west than us, but it is better their leaders, and no doubt many of them are gone, we can begin discussing the mining rights to the iron deposits around here immediately come sit. Said the man snapping his fingers and the new addition of four guards, moved the youngest of them getting two chairs for Raizetsu and Naruto to sit down on. Clearing her voice much to the man's inner shock Raizetsu took charge. Very well then our people require at least 7 pounds of iron ore from a week's worth of mining, which means we require from the estimates of our experts at the very least two large mines and three small, though two medium would well cover it in exchange for training form us for your guards. Hearing this Jan Mei took out a smoke pipe and lit it, an action Naruto noted was much akin to that of the third Hokage, a man who Naruto both loved but also faulted in several ways. The man was good grandfather and a fair Hokage to his people overall, but when it came to major political decisions that required a firm strong hand as he got older, he had faltered as his enemies gathered their strength politically, and he managed militarily against foes wanting some measure of gain against his village. Still he's buying time which way would you think old man this deal is as far as our experts say, well I ask them as fair as we can get so, unless you want something else why stall. Dan K. Sama the report from our guards working with Tanzo has come in said a guard just entering the room with some papers. Thank you Yinko excuse me Raizetsu san Naruto san while I look over this a moment. Raizetsu said as Naruto nodded. Take the time you need Jan Mei Dono. Nodding the man sighed as he took the pipe and smoked as he read the three page report he sighed as he got to the last page then looked up, smiled at them and said. You two drive a fair bargain I will take the training for the two medium mines, we only take the iron needed for the village from the bountiful deposits, so as long as your people do not go to any of the other natural deposits to mine without negotiating first we should have no problems. Smiling the two ninja nodded Raizetsu thinking. That seems far too convenient he must have had someone checking our people's intentions and possible blending in and hearing our intentions. She thought as it wouldn't be impossible for someone to slip in amongst the people that had visited the docks and talk to the wave citizens and some of the ninja gathering intelligence. The final agreements were pounded out by all there, and Jan Mei sighed as he thought to himself. The spy on them already Tanzo you sure work fast don't you? How long has that one been in my village and for what purpose were they originally here for? The old man wondered as the message hidden in the report was of an old tale the two had played games to in their youth, telling him to take whatever deal that was good for him and some way for him. The old man knew his former rival well the two having grown up together, and as he finalized an agreement and stamped it with his seal with the two youths in front of him, he idly wondered just what sort of actions Tanzo might take and if he would think these strangers' allies are a threat. One week later tea country. Within the confines of the Wasabi clan's house Lord Jirachi Wasabi laughter filled the household once again with much enthusiasm many of his family members being those with brownish grey hair, paid little mind to their lord being happy that he was still so filled with vigor however, I date stopped as he passed by his lord's personal den and knocked making the man pause and look to the doorway where. He smiled. Ah I date there you are my boy how are you this day? I date Wasabi formerly Marino smiled at his clan's head and adoptive father and said. Very well my lord though I am curious what is you extra happy this day. 
allowing himself a smirk something he rarely did which shocked Idate he said. Why don't you read it and see my son? The older man said and his son took the scroll and read it before saying. Son of a bitch his own country. Build Idate as Jirachu smirked then said. Yes he intends to actually build it using the ships he had built here on custom order in the nearby caves for special orders. Shitty definitely must have been pocketing some sweet change for that how much Ryo did it cost. Holding up a hand Idate groaned knowing what was coming. I date the wasabi clan never reveals our client secrets it is the butter to our bread I date the sauce to our dango dot. Sighing I date replied. I know dad, but wouldn't it be prudent for you to give me an estimate if I'm to be the clan head I'll need to know these things one day. I date stated carefully and the older man laughed clapping his son on the back. That's the way to do it I date you use legitimate reasons as my heir to circumvent and use our traditions to your advantage, good I am glad not see that as clan head, you know just how deep these things go, it shows that when dealing with outside forces, you will not let them harm us with the seemingly open loopholes of our rules. I had planned to tell you regardless my son, but first you must race Naruto before I can reveal such a secret it is his condition. Groaning the guy side he knew one day his haughty attitude while working for his lord in the shrine races would come back to bite him. Alright fine then and when I beat him I'll hear it form his own lips, if not you can tell me dad, so what sort of agreement did you two work out, that was only the first scroll telling you he made it there and set up trade with a local village. Clapping his hands the man said to his son. We have both agreed to trading for several spices preservatives and our lands, main export green tea leaves and powders, in exchange for ores to use within our ships, as well as several native clams and other seal fi that have been discovered to be very valuable in making jewelry, iron, Pearls as well as different food spices from the surrounding area, which has several abundant wild herbs and spices. Hearing that I date whistled then said to his father. So he's giving us ninja to guard this stuff. Nodding Jirachu added. Yes but not those wanted in the nearby countries however I have decided to get the Akagi clan to provide guards in order to have them see the trade for themselves, as several of the merchants wish to ply their trades elsewhere, Fire Country has in their words, charged them outrageous taxes, while none of the other countries really have exports we like besides Wave Country, and they're going through a dry spell as fishing season is over. Said Jirachu and Idate snapped his fingers and said. You're doing it so those old farts see that it's profitable and lend the merchants money for supplies to trade aren't you? Laughing lightly the head of the Wasabi family said. Yes son I am not just trained in finance, but a bit of politics my son and this can serve as a great lesson to you, some people are like picky children, you must unconsciously get them to try something to get them to see how good it could be for them. I agreed to pay off the debts for three of their major borrowers, in exchange they provide guards for the transports. This way the Akagi clan can see that the transport based trade is profitable, and I get some good favor with the daimyo, who might even decide to postpone the next shrine race, if we do a good enough job. Shaking his head at his father's plan he had to admit no one who thought they knew the man would see it coming his father was good natured at heart, and even tried not to harm flies when they would annoy him, rather shooing them away carefully, but when the man wanted something he definitely knew how to move the pieces on the board to get it. Back in the North Naruto's ninja fleet. Naruto sighed as he stamped the paper with an ink seal, one of the fresh ones created amongst his people, much to the celebration of those around him. The fires raged, and the people laughed and danced happily as Nishira said to him. It would seem we've managed to form our nation without many problems Namikaze-sama. Please use Amaki for now I will not take on his name just yet it will attract less attention, which is why in the west I think it will be more prudent for me to change my name or use an alias. The people among our fleet could call you Kays, and you can keep your first name that way you won't have any problems. I think Naruto Yuzuka's would prove to be a better name for me to go under, while I am here in the west, as the new nation of Jing. Nodding his people said nothing else about it, many foe the people they had rescued from the bandits were mingling with mostly the wave citizens, however some did speak to the ninjas among the group, while Nishira made an excuse to go talk to a civilian girl from wave, many of the other ninjas were talking on their own, however Naruto felt a hand grasp his shoulder and turned and was shocked to see it. it was Rizwetsu in civilian clothes. There's a place where we can eat the two of us Naruto would you like to go on a date with me? She asked and the blonde was shocked even more so as she pecked him on the lips after closing his open mouth with the palm of her hand which held his chin. Her indigo purple eyes flared with mischief as she said. And who knows maybe afterwards we'll have dessert I still haven't thanked you for saving me, and with all that's happened recently, I realize I want to enjoy more of life before I die, and you aren't just a good friend, but someone I've come to like a lot more than I thought I would. Smiling Naruto said with a sigh. Okay Raizetsu chan I wouldn't mind it's just I sort of owe Sasam chan a dan sometime so if she comes by please don't be mad. Raizetsu was obtai shocked and suppressed her frustration. Tom thought smile and say. 
that wouldn't be a problem we should go wheel they still have steak I really haven't had some in quite some time and I'd like to try what they have and peppered steak is my favorite. Nodding the blonde left unaware of the girl on the ship leaning against it with a smirk who thought. At first I was annoyed she beat me to the punch, but Naruto is a man of his word I'm glad I cornered him a few minutes ago. Still you want him too huh? Ryzetsu it's a good thing my clan has ways to deal with this and I've been taught to keep an open mind, besides Henzaki says the Uzumaki clan's numbers are low, maybe this will be just what they need. She thought as she left the area herself wearing a simple orange kimono with a blue sash, she was definitely not sticking out as others had swapped into some of their finest clothes to celebrate Jing's birth as a nation. It was only a matter of time, and when Naruto had suggested they hold a vote with him and several others, suggesting a name after the vote to make themselves a country had passed. Now with the population size to form a very small state with their ship serving as homes, it was only a matter of time before they further organized and formed a true state. I dates and we should be within their waters soon enough we're near the opening to the middle point out at the Jodan Sea and near the end of Kaisen Pass. Sighing the heir to the Wasabi clan, said to the sailor one of the men under his command from his father, well several vessels were filled with merchants and some Akagi clan inspectors, as well as several dozen guards. But that means I can go see this knucklehead and prove who's the fastest between us I wonder if he's still wearing the kill me orange. He asked himself and the retainer sighed thinking to himself. Master Idate is as eager to prove himself as ever, still it couldn't hurt for him to see his friend right. The older man asked himself while shaking his head as he found he really didn't want to know the answer. I date on the other hand look eagerly to seeing his friend again and getting what he had wanted when his friend opened his loud gen and mouth erase both to their fullest. Hanahagakur main road. Within the confines of the village hidden among the leaves was a seemingly warm village open to trade, negotiation, friendship, and seemingly the most open of the hidden villages. However to a trained eye the fact that it was a military force could not be overlooked, Ninja ran along the rooftops and Boo went on patrols and more importantly, Jonan trained the future soldiers of the village, as was usual. However to far better eyes the village seemed to be far different, then usual fights broke out people glared at each other, and loud voices could be heard frequently within these were the sights Lee and his team were becoming used to, and to be honest, seeing both of his teammates glares made even his flames of youth want to recede however, he kept up his usual energy and enthusiasm. Yosh. Niji Tenten I believe it would help strengthen our spirits if we go on a 20 km run 900 times across the village. Hearing this both teammates stopped glaring at each other and winced inwardly Lee applauded himself, for he had managed to get their attention off of hating each other. Tenten seeing the disaster waiting to happen if their sensei heard Lee's word said to him. Oh no we're fine. Just a bit of a disagreement about the time I was supposed to be picked P yesterday. She said glaring slightly at the male Huga who sighed and said to her. I'm sorry but Hinata-sama as well as Hiyashi-sama both required things of me that evening Hiyashi to help him go through some of my father's things and Hinata-sama required some counseling, she's taken the news of Naruto's disappearance poorly and the news that the Akatsuki is presumably gone to the shadows however, with word of Kumagakur, blaming us for the disappearance of his brother since he cannot get to the Akatsuki members and thinks we hired them. Hired them they tried to capture Naruto I mean I didn't know he was holding something they wanted I mean him being a Jinchuriki, it's a dangerous situation anyway you cut it. Said the girl sighing and shuddering as she remembered the description Sakura gave of the blonde when she found her shaken up the day they returned from the mission. And the weapon wielding girl couldn't help but flash back to the image of her uncle's body, the man having fraud against and being killed by the nine-tailed fox she had snuck in the room where his body was held at the funeral home to get one last look at him before the body was prepared. Needless to say the girl had a healthy dose of fear of the blonde and with the way ninja were wondered how dangerous the blonde was and if he was hiding his true self just waiting to strike. Dot. Lee on the other hand sighed and said. Then ten we do not know the whole situation please do not judge. Don't judge. Lee he's holding the beast that wiped out over 30% of the reserve forces 20 years ago and 40% of all the active ninja available. That's 450 ninja of all ranks and you want me to not be scared how. She yelled at him, and the Tejutsu user and yeller of youthful phrases winced, but their teammate said calmly. Tenten you are not helping the situation look. Tenten looked at where Niji motioned around them, and could see many of the villagers were nodding and agreeing to her statements muttering it was good the blonde was gone, and how many hoped he would never come back. Hearing this Tenten groaned. Damn it I'm scared alright. It's nothing personal, but I think it's better he's gone, I'm not the only one what about Choji. His brother died fighting the tailed beast he was only a chunin. Horino saw Sakura that day, and ever since has sworn off the blonde she says when she gets on the council, she'll get a motion passed to keep him out. Said Tenten and Niji groaned while Lee frowned. 
Be that as it may even if most of the rookies have a problem some of us see him for who he is not what he could be in regards to what ifs Tenten Naruto has been nothing more than a kind. Stubborn knucklehead of a person whose only goal is to win the respect of the village and prove his worth as a ninja he saved the village from Gara. I saw what he became when he fused with his beast Tenten it was not pretty. Not only that but there's the fact that he's gotten many good things for this village that have helped it prosper. And all of them are gone because of him Niji. Said a new voice and Niji sighed as he saw Sakura Haruno, her voice sounded a bit hollow but was filled with rage. Lee spoke before Niji who looked even more annoyed now spoke. Yosh. Naruto's flames of youth burned brightly. He is not a monster. He is not the beast the giant nine-tailed fox Sakura-chan. Hearing this Sakura yelled. No but he's a liar a deceiver a deserter he left us behind Lee, he abandoned the leaf village not only that, but now every country from spring to sand, he's gotten us alliances in has left doesn't that seem suspicious to you I. Mean damn it happened nearly all at once Naruto wants payback on the village Lee he was never our friend Ino Tenten Shino Choji, agree with me, Shikamaru says it's too troublesome to speak either way on it, think about that it's just you Lee and Kiba who believe in him, damn it open your eyes. Sakura said garnering a few cheers from the populace mostly civilians, while most of the ninja stayed neutral or went about their business, sighing Niji shook his head. Yes we're among the only ones who know what is the right choice in this matter, it's a shame that after all Naruto has done for each of us being our friend and never judging us based off of deadlocked preconceptions. But a ninja who not only gave his all to the village, it might not even be here if the fourth didn't seal the nine tails in him, and during the Chunin exams, he saved you from Gara, the current Kazikage, but back then mad Jinchiriki who really was a monster. Dot. On top of that he's gotten us several other nations to not only bolster our strength politically as allies, but financially Naruto is a ninja who does his best to help people he doesn't have malevolent bone for anyone based off of how they treated them, he doesn't hold grudges Sakura and all the time we've known him he never has. And given the fact that he promised to bring back your traitorous teammate who deserted the leaf, I would think that you would feel some loyalty to him, but I guess not. Said the Hyuga how dodged an incoming blow from the pinky to yelled. How dare you? Niji deftly dodged and then looked at his green wearing team and said. I think it's time we go Lee we seem to have overstayed our welcome. Yash I think you're right Niji san we should go deliver our reports to the mission's desk immediately from yesterday's mission. But that both young men left the area unaware of another person their age making their way home as quickly as they could. On a clan quarter Karama compound five Minchus later. Opening the door and heading inside her clan's compound, Yakumo Karama sighed as she noted the servant ushering her in, and some of the few clan members she had sitting around talking amongst themselves in the medium living room. Hello everyone good afternoon. Good afternoon Yakumo-sama. Said the men and women sincerely greeting her, and she smiled at them before being led by the servant further in. Follow me Yakumo-sama your uncle wishes me to bring you to him, he wishes for you to talk with him. Thank you Sachi, but I'm no longer a little girl anymore. Smiling the older woman with her hair and a ponytail and some light wrinkles, shook her head with a smile and said. I know that Unkai-sama wishes me to pick something up and run an errand for him, he should have the pack of gear ready for me to deliver now. Nodding the Kurama clan heiress, was led by her pseudo-mother and caretaker to her uncle's office, through the modest compound her clan had never been those for major frivolous things. Unlike the more prestigious noble clans of the leaf like the Hyuga, the Kurama clan had been a clan that had been fairly simple in their tastes, and as a clan had not spent much more than costs for maintenance and necessities. Which was why they were not being hit as hard economically by what was beginning to happen in the hidden lead village. Coming up to the doorway Yakumo and her pseudo-mother were welcomed in warmly by her uncle, a man who had shown and kept a new leaf, so to speak in the way he interacted with his clan in a more open and warm way. Ah Sachi Yakumo it's very good to see you both come and how has your day been Yakumo sweetie and Sachi, thank you for coming so soon, I wish for you to deliver this pack of gay for me, it would be highly suspicious if one my kinsman a ninja or Kinoichi did it or a ninja courier, but you always get the pack of gays delivered without issue. And I wish for you to take this pack of gay to Saiso. Hearing this the maid seemed a bit shocked, but smiled as she moved and took the pack of gay. I see so you're not going to leave him behind either huh? Sighing the head of the Kurama looked a bit older. No it is nearly unforgivable that he was left on the outside like that fighting to survive for six years on his own, he may never forgive us for the oversight for our dot dot mistake, but I wish for him to know his family will not abandon him a second time. Sighing the woman says. This could cause severe problems with the plan you know, and Yakumo here is no doubt burning with questions. Said the woman and the heiress to the clan blushed as she did I wonder how this ninja was and why her uncle seemed so uncomfortable. Dot. True he may very well go to the Hokage or some other ninjas and tell them what I have planned, he may tell those loyal to the leaf what he have done however, be that as it may, I wish to have faith in him to at the very least say and do nothing while we finish preparations. Sighing the older woman nodded and said. Tell her on Kai. 
Sachi said before departing and Yakuma looked at her uncle expectantly saying. What does Sachi mean uncle tell me what? Sighing the older man did not seem like he wished to say. I should tell her no matter what I promised my brother if she asked, I would say Murakumo, if only you were here you were always the more skilled orator. He thought before deciding the direct path was best. Ikumo you have a cousin that is outside of our clan, my brother's son Busurigaru Kurama, he was a man who frequently took trips out of the village he was an adventurer and a special jonin. He was my elder brother, and he would often tease me saying I was too uptight as the second eldest, however unlikely it may seem he found someone a young woman who he fell deeply in love with and loved him. She was a volatile spitfire eager to fight, and he was a calm collected man with a bit of an attitude, similar to the Nara clan's men. However the third ninja world war saw many ninjas die, and the village trying to churn out as many combat-ready ninja as possible, as mass assaults by the smaller ninja villages and alliances, became a daily thing. However it would be on a raid from Kagiro village, Kusagakur and Takigakur that your father on his way back from river country, where the Kanoichi from the other village to Nigakur the village of the land of rivers. He was escorting a noble from the land of rivers to negotiate a peace between fire countries daimyo and their nation when he was attacked, they had garnered the information of his mission, and over 30 ninja ambushed him nearly half were jonin, the rest were chunin ranked. He had managed to make a shadow clone and have it lead the noble to fire country successfully. Ikumo was shocked and had a very good idea what happened to her uncle and said. But he didn't survive did he? No, his shard corpse was found by a river where he had crawled with several blade weepus and wounds, he had over two-thirds of the attacking ninja killed, having used his gain jutsu and skill with a kusurigama to kill them. However what we didn't know was the kanoichi was pregnant and had passed on due to complications. Because of this your cousin did not have citizenship, one of the other ninjas had caught his mother with the leaf ninja, and the boy was branded the son of a traitor, before the treaty was signed, meaning he was the son of a traitor, and he was left to survive outside at a civilian village, where he was raised as a civilian, until the village was attacked by bandits. Our brother had left him a scroll and though young and inexperienced he had managed to out of sheer desperation, use a gain jutsu to escape and then make his way to the place the symbol on the scroll was of Kanahagakur, asking rural farmers he made his way to the village and recognizing him one of the Chunin guards was able to arrange for him to have a blood test done and the hidden leaf was able to realize he was a relative of Busurigama but not his son as the tests were not as advanced back then and could only define clan based matches not parentage. Due to this the boy was given a stipend from Busurigama's account, as well as some money from the Leaf Orphanage Fund, the young man however, did not seek us out. He had by this time become jaded and believed he could do it all on his own, he wanted to prove he could be his own man, before contacting us much to my own shock, when the 14-year-old sent me a letter detailing who he was and that he had made Chunin without our help. And follow his own path in ninja way without our intervention in his life. Hearing this shocked Yakumo deeply however she couldn't help but have respect for her cousin for surviving through such an ordeal. I see I am glad you told me this uncle I did as you asked me to, and I think I know of several ninjas that we could approach about our pilgrimage. Seeing this the man raised an eyebrow and asked. Who would they be? Sighing Yakumo relayed the events she had seen happen with Niji Hugar Akli, and the information about Kibo also being trustworthy from what it seemed, and the older man sighed. Out of all those young prospective skilled gen and only three are completely trustworthy, it's a shame Naruto risked his life for you, while hardly knowing you, and only three of his friends are equally trustworthy. Oh Yakumo by the way I was wondering would you want me to inquire about a betrothal contract between you and him. You you uncle. Please that's too much. Said the chocolate haired girl blushing fiercely which made the older man laugh and say. Just like your mother. Oh when your father asked her out she was so flustered. Good I know you have feelings for him a crusher otherwise I don't know, but you should jump on the while you can he's been seen in the company of a female friend, and I do not know how long you may have to try and get a place in his heart, even if you must share it. But the Uzumaki clan being scattered and nearly extinct drastic measures may be needed to help it revive. Said the man with Yakumo adding on dot. The same could be said for our own numbers have always been an issue, but heading west getting out of this village where so many people see us as a third-rate unknown clan could be just what we need, especially given the fact that the Hokage has denied our requests to get out of the village to visit old relatives we have outside of the two branches to bolster our numbers. Hearing this on Kai's side it was true in his opinion it seemed that the Hokage was reluctantly building up her forces and being more militant and stringent with travel into and out of the village for any reason even to visit relatives married to politicians or nobles, out of love or arranged marriage amongst the ninja clans. An attitude he knew was no doubt making the other Kage even more nervous and on the lookout for any sign of a conflict, especially given the Raikage's threats and the Tsuchikage fanning the flames between him and the leaf, citing the old war Hokdanzo as a main threat to both their villages. 
as a rude Anbu had been found at meeting between Cloud and Stone to discuss what they would be giving together to the fledgling ninja alliance. Needless to say all points of agreement to such a thing were out of the window, as the rude Anbu was found with high-powered explosive notes in the form of a vest on him. But both ninja villages having begun to build up their forces dramatically and move them closer pushing them through the borders of nearby countries, seemingly in groups and teams as was usual. However Unkai had seen such build up before during both ninja wars he lived through, and the Kanahagakar council was set to meet to discuss it, he was a friend of Inoichi Yamanaka, and when drunk the man despite his mental training, could go off like a faucet on full blast, something he suspected the man's daughter had inherited. Sighing as he could see his niece was thinking as hard as him he said. The Ella village is going to get involved in a war whether it's with the Akatsuki or another village doesn't matter, what does matter is us being prepared, and I do not wish to chance Oru clan's livelihood in this war. Which is why I have decided we will wait no longer, then two weeks then we will use the scroll Naruto has sent us through the land of T's ride ninja postman, and then we will head off. Sighing, Yakumo said. Dot. Two weeks to gather them all and hopefully without anyone who will speak of it to the higher-ups, this is definitely going to be some of the most tense times for the I have no doubt we will manage to survive and thrive from it. Said the heiress to the clan in a tone that made Unkai practically glow with pride as he thought. She sounds like a true clan head I am so proud of you my little Yakumo I had worried ABO to you and tried my hardest not to smother you. Dot. I know I appeared cold, but I was so scared of harming you with my words of actions and making things worse with your pores, but now I can let you know how proud I am. He thought as she got up and walked over his desk and hugged his niece who was shocked but smiled and hugged back as he said. I am so proud of you my niece you are like the daughter I never got to have with my fiancé before she perished all those years ago in the second ninja world war said the man who felt so much closer to his niece who he now viewed as a daughter, and he swore if Naruto or any other man ever made her sad he would put them in a game jutsu the likes of which no one not Kurinayu here Itachi Ichiha had ever seen or crafted out of anger. Meanwhile Naruto felt a chill run up his spine and swore he would be good to all his female friends, no matter what though why he did he had no idea why. Land of Snow Spring. I'm Yokoyuki Kazuhana was many things to her people beautiful, fair, impartial and a symbol to them of everything they wanted in a monarch and the very thing that to them embodied the nation so well. Which was a good reason why the woman was so frustrated with her chief retainer. Ayatsu I can handle going to see my friend I am even going to be traveling under an alias, so why is it I cannot go to see him in his own country to wish him well on founding a nation and leaving that treacherous village? Asked Koyuki Kazuhana making her chief retainer the son of her late personal assistant and bodyguard Sandaka Sama. Ayatsu Asama was a young man with broad soldiers with a bigger build than his father by at least two muscle classes, however the man was not overly bulky and had the physique of a middle-class wrestler. He possessed slightly tanned skin in contrast to his father, but had his goatee and eye wore robes in a samurai robe fashion and had a red belt sash over his light grey robes, he also had a katan attached to his hip and a wakizashi on the opposite side of his belt, he had light blonde hair clearly from his mother, which was in a top knot fashion of a samurai. Said retainer went to his knees holding his hands in a sign begging forgiveness as he said. Please forgive me Lady Kazuhana, but I have not finished gathering the ninja from Harugakur however the last of them required for your journey have been pulled from those spots on the borders where they are not needed. As you know the main ninja villages are gearing for war and the Akatsuki the group who seem to have been hunting people like your friend Naruto have disappeared once more. Koyuki sighed hearing this but nodded her acceptance saying. But I would like to leave by the end of the week at the least, I know the spring ninja wish to secure the country and make sure we are safe from the fighting, but this is important to me Ayatsu this is my friend the man who gave me the strength to rise and be the leader the people of the land of snow and springs needs. Ayatsu nodded he knew his daimyo had been inspired by the young man and could not help but smirk and say. That and you wish to give him another kiss from his bedside no melody. Hearing this Koyuki blushed and said. Hey Ayatsu it I do not believe damn it Ayatsu it's not like that I mean I would like it if he felt well of me like that, but. You had heard he had a crush on his teammate that is past Melody one of my men there, says she does not wish for him in any such way, and he seems to have cooled to such affections and sees her as a friend, especially given the fact that he seems close with a woman who he escaped with from the ninja prison. Dot. However his clan form what I heard had some peculiar customs, especially when their numbers were low, and you may still be able to find a place in his heart. Hearing this Koyuki blushed at the implications and cough changing to a more official tone. If such a matter can bring our two nations closer then so be it from the messages they sent they have many goods which can help our land prosper. Smiling the man said nothing as he could tell his daimyo was also thinking about what he had said and Ayatsu was glad. I have done much research on that boy if he has changed for the better like my spies say, then he will prove to be a good match for Koyuki-sama competition aside. He thought while well, Koyuki thought. 
it has been some time and I can hardly wait to see my friend again and reconnect he's one of the few to still treat me like myself despite my titles. She thought as despite finding out she was a daimyo he had not just respected her but treated her like she was still Yuki Fujikas and for that she was very grateful. As the ruler looked at her retainer she sighed thinking of another matter she wished to ask him. How does it go with the training of my new guards? Smiling the man chuckled and said. Well the instructor we have hired my teacher for my time in the land of Iron Hatsuki Kagam has proven to be very effective, nearly all the recruits are picking up well on the exercises, and we should have force to complement the technology and snow and spring jutsu of our ninjas and make up for their lack of numbers in comparison to the larger ninja villages. Hearing that her plan to protect her lands was well on its way the daimyo sighed and said. That I do not know which way the winds will blow, but the change seems favorable, the weather has just begun to defrost, we will be the land of spring once more, with my father's machine being powered on once the weather becomes warmer, it should once again turn us into the land of spring just five more seasons of this, and we should be able to make his dream come true and become the land of spring. Permanently. She said with her retainer only nodding firmly once he had known Samsetsu Kazuhana and felt bad that the man had passed on as he did, he saw that his daughter was not just following her father's path, but expanding in it, making spring country not just a land whose climate would bolster her people, but one where by strength of defenses as well as their warm and peaceful nature, would keep the nation. Alive for several decades to come. Her in time Jing. It was a gem in the making thought the Akagi inspector Kunglun, as he saw the city flourishing in the distance an island built from wood stone and iron, which seemed to be in the middle of expanding dot, and if he had to be honest with himself, he was shocked the land further past it was a beach coast, and further past it seemingly of various forest leans and mountains far inland. The man however shook of what awe he felt and looked at the fleet around him, seeing the various ships several medium vessels were armed with crossbow launchers. A standard defense of the Akagi clan guard junk ships their half-triangle sails, as well as thick wood being accustomed to protect the ships and make bandits weary of the medium bolt launchers, mounted and several sides of the ship by sailors. Nonetheless the man found himself looking at the merchant vessels garnered around the Wasabi clan vessel, a lean fast ship designed to cut through the water like a blade, which had the air of the Wasabi clan himself idate Wasabi at the head of looking ahead, while occasionally speaking to his sailors and crewmen as they worked. Yes Kung Lun would definitely see how he interacted with the leader of this new nation however Kung Lun could not help but wonder just what kind of man had made the seemingly flourishing state. Ding Harbor. Stop tapping the docks Naruto it's making us nervous. Naruto chuckled and scratched the back of his head while apologizing. Dot. Sorry Rai Zetsu-chan I'm nervous I haven't seen I-Date in a while the guy really can get under my skin, but on top of that I have the inspectors from the Akagi clan the same bankers who I tried to help collect their debt on Tsunade for coming here, this could either really help trade or hurt it. Smiling the former grass Kanoichi kissed Naruto on the cheek and held his hand. Dot. Don't worry about it Naruto we won't have any problems besides we've got Mizura at the trade house prepping the people and making sure all his people both the marines and merchant divers are there. Naruto sighed as he thought of the former Miss Ninja, who had become basically the representative of the former Miss Ninja's dad. He had made several good points and had helped basically to unite them and help integrate them well into society, and as a leader to them, Naruto had placed him as the first member of his council as the leader maritime organization or minister of seas. But the former Miss Native delving well into the role and establishing a marine corps for the navy, as well as organizing those Miss Natives who were both fishermen and commercial divers into trade organizations and organized forms. Needless to say the man had earned Naruto's approval for these actions, and the praise thankfully did not go to the man's head. True and Sasum should be getting back from Kanto village. At this Raizetsu merely nodded though part of her felt the slightest bit of annoyance as he mentioned her as the grass Kanoichi could see the look in her eyes and knew she had a competitor, though she was a bit confused the girl's uncle was very polite to her and mentioned he hoped the two would get along together, seemingly knowing of how both felt about the blonde which made her smile as she thought back to the events of the festival and how she felt waking up the next day however the former Anbu shook herself out of such musings as she saw the fleet in the distance become clearer and clearer. And soon the ships were docking at the new port that was another thing she had to admit that Naruto when he used the shadow clone jutsu was an amazing thing and she was truly amazed by how fast the work went for the docks and other features of their new home with Naruto's shadow clones helping. But she put that out of her mind as the ships docked and the sailors of the vessels from their old home continent began to tie their vessels to the shoreline poles. One of the first vessels the fastest the Wasabi clan cutter was already docked and its ramp was down, and much to Raizetsu's shock, a young man ran up to her with the speed of a chunin rank ninja, before stopping with a short jump in front of Naruto as he said. So think you're faster than me Orange-chan. 
grunting the blonde inwardly groaned he had cut down on his orange wearing and limited to a black vest with orange pattern black triangles, two coming from the opening of his short sleeves and the bottom of the black lining of his vest. He wore a grey shirt and blue ninja pants however he wore no headband form his old village, but wore a blue band with white circle painted on the middle. I could saw the same for you bird coon. Grunting the wasabi clan air laughed and clapped the blonde on his back, giving him a handshake and said. But you haven't lost your goal over the years I'm glad to see it, so who's this wife? Asked the wasabi air looking at Ryazetsu with curious eyes and her smirk seeing her blush, but was shocked why Naruto saying. If she wishes to be though I don't know if I'm ready for marriage yet this is my girlfriend Ryazetsu, Ryazetsu meet one of the few bastards that can yell me halfway under the table I date Marino now wasabi right? Hearing this Marino turned wasabi nodded, grinning as she said. Yeah I'm the clan's heir now Jirachu Sama daddy said, I'm the hope and future of the clan, and that it's time for me to begin going further into my duties. That's why he asked me to accompany the Akagi clan inspectors. Nodding the blonde turned and faced the incoming group of said inspectors that had now come up to them, and noted the leader of them, who seemed to be a thin man wearing a slightly expensive kimono however he had the eyes and body language of a man who was under no delusions, and was all business. An experienced man who knew what he was doing was the impression the two ninja got from the man who bowed to them respectably. Naruto Samurai Zetsu san, it is good to see you. I hope that we can begin this inspection in good time. I wish to see what else this nation has to offer. Kun Lun san, it is good to meet you. We can begin immediately and head to the trading house where the merchants are waiting immediately. Nodding, the group made their way further into Jing's port and made their way to the trading house for the port's wear inspection. The end. So, how was this part? I hope you like it. And if you like it share this part with your friends and like the video too. And don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily awesome fanfiction. Okay it's time for me to go. Bye bye.